Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, December 15th. The state auditor is our guest this morning. Let's go on the record. Beacon Hill accountability is the mission of Suzanne Bump's office. What a new investigation reveals about how secure your personal information is. This is a transformative agreement. It's a Massachusetts Congressman Richard Neal, a key player in the trade and impeachment talks in D.C. But how is it playing here back home? And the power of one vote. Just ask the newest member of the Boston City Council how important that is. Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to OTR. I don't have to remind you, we're halfway through December already. I'm Ian Harding, along with News Center 5's political reporter, Janet Wu. Great to have you with us. Our guest this morning is the Massachusetts State Auditor, Suzanne Bump. She's a Democrat. She's held the office since 2011. Before that, she served as Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development under Governor Deval Patrick. She also served as a state rep from the 5th Norfolk District. She holds degrees from Boston College and Suffolk University. It's great to have you with us. Thank you. It's a welcome, to welcome, be here. welcome. Thanks. Are you, is your shopping almost done? Yeah. <laughs> I know. We're all yeah. sort of in a panic. Yeah, I haven't we? even thought about it. Right, Too close right, to Thanksgiving. Right. Yeah. Um, so one of the most precious things that I would say taxpayers own in this country is their Social Security number. It's sort of like the gateway to many benefits, to tax filings, and as well as your identity for you know credit cards or many other things. Right. You have a new audit that's coming out tomorrow, I believe, and it's on the Department of Revenue, the Massachusetts Department of Revenue. What did you learn and um, also about all of this, and uh, can you tell us about what the security issues are? So you will recall that there have been a couple of uh, significant releases by the Department of Revenue, inadvertent releases of, of, uh, of personal information, uh, some from one set of businesses, having their books open to another set of businesses and in the other case it's been uh, child support notices that were sent wrongly to employers asking them to withhold um, information uh, rather uh, uh, child support payments mm -hmm. and there were large um, numbers mm -hmm. it was like 39,000 39,000 companies had their has had their business and tax information exposed uh, and then there were 6,100 right. um, uh, misdirected Child support enforcement. People's um, social orders. security numbers sent to the in, wrong yes, people. In, in, yes, in all of in those right. all of those instances, people had their information uh, exposed. Um, we have in the auditor's office uh, an IT unit. We uh, we audit to ensure that. Uh, all agencies have proper security plans, um, and we found that um, in several significant respects, um, DOR was falling short of its ability to protect data, uh, to do the long-term planning, to, uh, to test security procedures, um, and in fact, they were lacking in procedures. They had policies, but they had no means, no plans for how they were going to implement any several of these policies. Several lacking, I'm hearing severe yeah, words. Yeah, it was... Um, um, it, it, they acknowledged the failures to their to their credit, but they didn't have. They weren't complying with executive orders. They weren't meeting standards that have been um, prescribed, uh, not just for uh, for state government, but for state government agencies that hold such critical personal identifiable information. Uh, so they they didn't have procedures in place. They hadn't done the planning. Um, they had not. They, did, they just weren't operating with an so eye to its security. Than, so it's more than just having an outdated data system or right. an outdated computer system. The entire structure. The whole infrastructure for data security was missing at the Department of Revenue. Which, now boil that down. Exposure is one thing and, and, and actual issues is another thing. So boil it down to us. So they weren't, they weren't taking um, uh, affirmative measures to prevent hacks. Um, if there were, they didn't have plans, uh, procedures in place. If there had been a hack, how they were going to respond mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. it. They didn't have an, an appropriate uh, committee uh, that would include not just their IT professionals, but all of the business units so that they could do, figure out what the, what kind of planning and investment needed to be undertaken in order to secure the, the data that they have. I mean, it's pretty ironic, actually, that they have been disclosing uh, inadvertently this information, um, and yet... The, so it was not even hacking, it was they were... They, was, they, they had they, sent out they, the information it, This was their mistake. Right. Right. This was just their mistakes, and then though, but they hadn't, didn't have sufficient protections against against 
intrusions into their into their system. So how has how has Joe Smith been hurt by this? Uh, there there has been the risk of uh, of a hack and then uh, an inability on the part of the uh, Department of Revenue to quickly identify that hack and then remedy mm -hmm. the situation. Mm -hmm. And there um, and many people's social security numbers were sent to the wrong place. And then that that absolutely the did happen right. uh, for 6100 people 6, and then the 39 39,000 um, uh, businesses whose employee data was was uh, was Revealed. opened to other businesses. So, so let's talk about another another recent audit that you released that it involves the state of police training here in Massachusetts. Forty hours of in-service training is mandated by law each year, if I have that number correctly. Right. Over twenty-five million dollars was spent. New taxes were even levied last year to pay for all this. What was the result? Well, the. Uh, there is a tremendous financial burden on the part of municipalities, local property taxpayers, uh, to try to meet this requirement of ensuring that their police force is properly trained, is getting the 40 mm -hmm. hours a, um, a, a, a year in training. Um, the state, which imposes this requirement, is, has been making minimal investment in, in service training. So it's 20. Two million dollars on the part of municipalities, 1.5 million on the part of the state, um, and this we we have found that not all um, uh, police officers are actually getting the required 40 hours uh, a year, um, and in some instances there are communities we know that they are getting no training and it's a question of affordability mm -hmm. uh, because not only do the communities have to pay for the training but then they also have to pay sure. uh, the officers while they're getting the training and 40 and, hours and, is a work week yeah. so take you're taking a work week out. and 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 the facilities are lacking again we have seen a lack of long-range <laughs> planning to figure out uh, what the what the relevant courses are that are needed for policing in the modern age it's a real disservice mm -hmm. to to the police officers but then also to the public yeah. because we know that there are more and more violent confrontations. We know there are more and more mental health, um, uh, folks with mental health problems that are out on the streets. Uh, we know more sexual assaults are being reported, cyber crime. More stress is uh, on, on the system. And, yep. and, the, and our, we are ill-equipping our police officers to do the job that they want to do and that we expect of them. Um, another major agency uh, in the Baker administration that's been getting lots of attention because of a major tragedy on a New Hampshire highway um, showed that there were massive problems at the Registry of Motor Vehicles. Tens of thousands of out-of-state violations dating back to March 2018 had simply been ignored. You've done some past audits revealing dead people having license renewed or license that should have been revoked um, and that were not how bad is the situation overall at the RMV today? Well, you don't have to take my word for it. You could look at the report that uh, the uh, Grant and Thornton uh, agency An uh, independent did. audit. An independent uh, group was called in to find out what went wrong with, um, with the out-of-state traffic notices that weren't being processed. Why was that? Uh, and they saw that it, the problem wasn't restricted to that, to that aspect of the registry of motor vehicles that in fact because they weren't doing some very basic things that you do in business which is plan not just for the successes but plan for failures you know risk management is is what you um, you do need to have as part of a basic business plan they hadn't done risk management they didn't know where things could go wrong um, and there wasn't an attention to making sure that it was done right not just in this area but in other areas they said, including the issuance of driver's license based on fault, fraudulent so, identification. And as a result, which is dead exactly, people, it, a lot of dead people exactly, are still having licenses renewed. Which is exactly renewed. what we found in our audit of one year ago. That's where I was going. You, the last time you audited the RMV was a year ago? A year ago. ago. Did, did you discover the significant problems of the backlog of suspended licenses and that No, we, we only were looking at the issuance of licenses and, um, and of the issuance of handicapped uh, person's mm -hmm. placards because we also found that they were not ensuring that the person um, who had originally been issued the, the placard was still alive um, when they just automatically uh, uh, issued a renewal and we know of, we know the problems of placard abuse. I'm going to change the mood completely right here. We're going to go to the OTR pop quiz. 
This is my least favorite part of the show. No, no, no. It <laughs> She'd be. rather stick with the more serious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Favorite yeah, part. Ask me, no, ask me about an audit. It's only. <laughs> yeah, we're going to audit the OTR pop quiz right now, and it's only three pages long. Oh, so our great. pop quiz begins on Beacon Hill, appropriately in the auditor's office. It has been quite some time, but can you name the last Republican to hold the office of state auditor? The choices are on the screen. Is it John E. White, John W. Kimball, or Alonzo B. Cook? C. It, exactly right. Serving from Did 1915 to 1931. Did you know that or was that a guess? That was a wild guess based on his name bing, and, bing, the, bing, and bing, the amount bing. of time that I know has passed since you he's nailed been it. a Republican <laughs> auditor. It's See? been a while. Brilliant well, deduction good, right in, there. Good instinct. Right, right. As state auditor, in many ways, you take on the role of Beacon Hill Watchdog. So on the topic of dogs... What is the, yeah, that was a reach, right? We're, we're going from watchdog to the topic of dogs. What is the official state dog breed of Massachusetts? The Golden Retriever, the Boston Terrier, the Irish Setter. Well, I'm going to hope it's the obvious one, the Boston Terrier. There you go, there you okay. go. Okay, you're there doing you go. pretty well. All right, well, I usually do. We can't quit yeah, it two but for it's, two. Yeah, but it's, you know, my heart's always a but, flutter. Well, you can relax for two minutes and we'll be right back. And then the heart will go flutter again. <laughs>